Welcome everyone to our Zoom webinar and our Facebook Live interface. And as I mentioned earlier on, you may post questions via Facebook Live or via Zoom. And that is it. And let's start with today's topic being parenting plans. A parenting plan or parenting plans, depending on what you want to call it. The long and the short of it is that if parents cannot come to an agreement regarding the issue of how they are going to parent the minor child, it usually applies or most of the time applies to parents who are living in different separate homes or a home where the minor child is not always living with both the parents. I hope that makes sense. Or separated parents or divorced parents whereby the minor child will spend some time with one parent in his or her, or her home and with the other parent in his or her, or her home. Maybe also not necessarily as such, maybe only visitation, whereby the minor child will live with one parent indefinitely, continuously, primarily, and the other parent might have contact during the week for a few hours or during the weekend for a few hours and so on. The other example could be where the parties will share contact equally, whereby the minor child will reside with one parent for one week and with another parent for the following week. So that's what we are discussing today, parenting plans. Or maybe I should have changed the word to parenting plans with an S, but let's leave it as such. Therefore, when a client comes to my office and he or she is asking me, Advocate, what can I do? There's a minor child involved. We have a minor child together with the other party, but we cannot come to an agreement regarding extramural activities, schooling, the school the child should attend. A common example would be when contact should take place during the week, should it take place during the week? Holiday contact, weekend contact, we cannot come to that type of agreement and every year we have the same problem. Every month we have the same problem. We cannot come to an agreement regarding that. And that is how family lawyers um, remain busy and how the family court remains busy and how the divorce court remains busy because those are the issues that we generally deal with. Parents cannot come to an agreement. When the parents are living together in the same home, there is some type of understanding, of course. One parent will go to work on his way, on his or her way home. He or she will collect the child from aftercare. Alternatively, one parent will be at home caring for the child and there is some type of understanding and there aren't any problems. If there are any disputes, it gets resolved immediately, there and there, there and then. However, once the parents are living in separate homes, they live separate lives, there are issues involved, problems can arise, and that is whereby, that is when the parties need a parenting plan. They are no longer husband and wife, they are no longer lovers, they may no longer be friends. They may, they may hate each other, but they are co-parents. And they have this beautiful child that, has, that they brought into this world who they need to care for. They may, they may have made a mess or not have been the best couple or spouses or lovers, whatever the case may be, but they can become the best co-parents. And I, say, and I say that with, with respect and motivation that although your relationship with the other party has come to an end and it did not work, you guys argue, you guys fought, there might have been domestic violence, swearing, families, cursing each other, whatever the case may be, that's fine, that happened, this is a past. I cannot do with that, I cannot change the past. But going forward, the question is, how can we make you and the other parent, the best co-parents for this child. So that this child, although his mom and dad no longer lives together in the same home, or they are not together, he or she has the best team as a parent any child could ask for. So that is where you can become the best co-parent for your child. If you have any questions regarding this topic, please feel free to pose it. Either call me via the Zoom, you can see the details on top over there, yes. Call in via Zoom, www.abdelof.co.za forward slash Zoom. It should take you to a registration link 
Alternatively, Facebook Live, make sure that you are under Advocate Mohammed Abdullah Facebook page. Otherwise, I shall not see it. For example, do not go on the Our Lawyer Facebook page. I'm not streaming from there, I'm streaming from the Advocate Mohammed Abdullah Facebook page. And pose a question and we will and we shall post it onto the whiteboard in front of us. But let us unpack the issue concerning a parenting plan. Let me get that up onto the screen. All these buttons and things we have to look at when you're dealing with these webinars. Ah, there it is. Can you see it? Move it to there. And maybe make it a bit bigger. Ah, that's, that looks a bit better. Okay. Long and short of it, if you cannot see it on the screen, um, I, might, I might advise you to Google, type in the Children's Act and somewhere and you will definitely find it there are many links to download the children's act and have a look at the section regarding parenting plans section 33 of the children's act part three of the children's act and let us unpack it let me get to the pdf document on my screen okay contents of a parenting plan very important what what is a parenting plan it says, section 33, subsection 1, the co-holders of parental responsibilities and rights in respect of a child may agree on a parenting plan determining the exercise of their respective responsibilities and rights in respect of a child. So, you have to be co-holders of parental rights and responsibilities. You cannot enter into this agreement with a third party, with an uncle or aunt or grandmother, unless it is, they have parental rights and responsibilities. Now, let us look at subsection 2. It deals with a situation when the parties should basically enter into a parenting plan. The first section of section was may agree. The second section one, the, I'm sorry, the second section will deal with a scenario whereby the parties need to. If the co holders of parental responsibilities and rights in respect of a child are experiencing difficulties in exercising their responsibilities and rights, those persons, before seeking the intervention of a court, must first seek to agree on a parenting plan determining the exercise of their respective responsibilities and rights in respect of the child. So we'll stop there for one second and let us unpack that. What is being said? The law is saying, if you are a co-holder of parental rights and responsibilities, your mom and your dad, and you guys are experiencing difficulties in exercising your responsibilities and rights, what would be an example of responsibilities and rights? One would be having access to your child. And the other would be caring for the child, looking after the child during the day. And the other part would say, I would like to have contact with the child. That's a simple example. There's difficulties. The mother believes, no, you cannot see the child at night during the week. The child is 17 years old. She's, she needs to study. I think matric. You cannot come the evenings or correct the child. She's busy with schoolwork. Or the child is too young, no, you cannot come the evenings. It's always a challenge for the other party. Or well, the other party says, no, I would like to see the child every single weekend because you are caring for the child during the week and it's only fair for me to have contact during the weekends. Then the mother might say, it's, that's unfair. When do I get an opportunity to deal, so to have fun with the child? Because from Monday to Friday, although the child is with me, it's homework, it's chores, it's everything. You know, it's the hard work. It's not fun and games. It's rearing the child. I even on weekends, yes, you have your weekend, but I also need some time to spend quality time with my child. Otherwise, my child will only believe that I am the, the, you know, how can I say now, the nasty parent. The parent with all the rules and the regulations. And you are the fun parent, whereby you only spend time with the child on weekends and have loads of fun with the child. But those are the disputes the parties are having. The law says before going to court and having a judge or a magistrate try to resolve this matter and make a decision we need to first try to agree on a parenting plan okay so that makes sense hopefully so and then the question is what would a parenting plan include what would it entail that is where subsection 3 comes into operation it says the following 
a parenting plan may determine any matter in connection with parental responsibilities and rights. For any, including, meaning many more other than what's mentioned here. A, where and with whom the child is to live, the maintenance of the child, contact between the child and any of the parties, meaning the parents, the co-holders of parental rights, and any other person. So they can have a plan for a third party. Okay, we have contact X, Y, and Z, but aunt and uncle and grandma can have contact on those days, or the step parent, or the past step parent, the previous step parent, or the father's girlfriend, the past girlfriend, somebody he was involved with for a long time. And the schooling and religious upbringing of the child. That is what the Children's Act unpacks, but there can be other aspects as well in relation to the child that the Children's Act did not deal with. Um, yeah, what could be a simple example could be, you know, dealing with dispute resolution. The parenting plan can deal with those type of things. And as we always go to court, can we get a facilitator on board? Can we get a mediator on board? So they can all be restructured into the parenting plan. For example, um, communication between the parents regarding schooling. Very important aspect. Um, how will the parents try to communicate with each other regarding aspects of schooling? They can also be stipulated in a parent plan. But moving on, what is the standard? Is the following subsection 4. The parenting plan must comply with the best interest of the child standard as set out in section 7 of the Children's Act. Okay, you can all go and view that after you download the Children's Act. Now we go further in preparing a, a parenting plan. Can you guys see that? Hopefully you can. Here's the following. In preparing a parenting plan as contemplated in subsection 2, those sections we dealt with early on, the parties must, is peremptory, must seek the assistance of a family advocate, social worker, or psychologist, or mediate, mediation through a social worker or other suiti or suitably qualified person. So mediation can also take place. So you must approach a professional person, family advocate, social worker, or psychologist, or mediation to a social worker or other suitably qualified person, for example, an attorney, and so on. So an attorney's job would be to mediate it. The formalities, a parenting plan must be in writing. Wonderful, I'm glad it's stipulated and you can presume that some people will think it can be in the mind. They have this type of understanding of a parenting plan, but when a problem arises, this understanding in the mother's mind is not necessarily the understanding of what's in the father's mind. Therefore, it needs to be in the writing. And subject to subsection 2, may be registered with a family advocate or made an order of court. That's very important to note. Now we've got this beautiful parenting plan, well drafted, dealing with all aspects of the minor child's life, typed out, signed between the parties. What happens then? Registered with the Office of the Family Advocate or made an order of I will stop there and I will not go further regarding the issue of how a parenting plan works, etc. because then it becomes just academic. I would encourage each one of you to go online, type in the Children's Act and download the Act. Look at Section 33. Dealing with, dealing with a parenting plan. The reason why I am discussing the issue of a parenting plan today is that is because many people believe that the best way to resolve these type of matters are to go one time to a lawyer or to the court. First time to the lawyer or to the court. They do not try to or seek the assistance of other professional people. Here we refer to social workers, mediators, the family advocate's office. And that is what the legislature is encouraging. Before going to court, before going to the judge or the magistrate, before litigating this matter, before 
fighting over these type of issues in a court of law, go to a professional person, sit down. Because many times it comes about that the parties were so embroiled in, in arguments and issues that for the last two, three years, they never ever sat down as parents and discussed the issues at hand. They only focus on fighting and becoming old and stressing themselves out. With a professional, a mediator or social worker or someone that knows what they're doing, an attorney, an experienced attorney, they can mediate these issues. They can say, mother, please say, do not say anything. Let the father speak. The father will speak. He will unpack his issues he has with the mother, specifically regarding the child. He will unpack it. And that might be the first time in the last five years that the mother actually listened to the father without preparing her response to what she is going to respond to what the father has said. For example, my English was a bit bad there. What many times happen is when people are arguing, they're discussing matters, and one person speaks, they do not listen to the other party. They're already formulating a response to that specific discourse, whatever the other person is saying. And they haven't applied their mind to what they are saying. It can be sometimes very um, interesting, very beneficial, very relevant to listen to the other party. But they do not want to do that. They want to have the final say. They want to argue. They want to debate with the other party. But in a mediation session, you will have your turn. You might have your hour, your two hours, your three hours, your whole day you want to speak. You're welcome to do that. But let the other party first speak. Listen to the other party. You might not have to agree with the other party. You do not have to do that. But you need to listen. And by listening to the other party, you can jot some notes down. You can work with that data. And you can, and you and the other party can be the architects of your parenting plan. As opposed to going to the judge, the judge doesn't know who you are. All that he knows is based upon some documentation which he quickly looked through. He applied his mind to it, of course, and maybe a quick report and some other data, and then have to make a decision that applies to your lives and the child's lives for the next 15 years, 10 years, depending upon the age of the child. But if you and the other party come to an agreement, work on a parenting plan as suitable to you. Yes, you have issues, you have problems, you guys fight all the time. But if you can come to some type of a agreement after discussion, you will hate the fact that the father wants to come every single evening to visit the child. But the father might not see your point of view, why you want that. This parenting plan, this mediation process will assist you in coming to that specific solution. I have no questions today. I actually liked it when I received no questions. Sometimes because it means that it means people are listening to me and they are and they're absorbing um, what I'm saying. But that's it for parenting plans today, and um, I hope to see you online soon. And I hope that parents will be the best possible co-parents possible, although the relationship has come to an end. But the person that benefits under these circumstances are the minor children involved. Have a lovely day and I shall see you online soon.